Some time ago, Arctic made a big reveal out of their new Frieza 35 family. Ignoring all of the fancy animations within the video, the whole lineup is actually not that hard to understand. In the end, there are four new coolers now. The 35, the 35CO, the 35 ARGB and the 35 RGB. All to make it easy, the one using essentially just a P12 PV and PSD fan, the one using a P12 meant for constant operation, the one with the fairy dust and the one with the fairy dust but who wired all of the light to the same switch. Having those four new coolers, there is something new that Arctic did with these, which they usually do not do. For each of those four versions, there is an I and an A version. And no, this is not some sort of Apple-inspired I cooler thing. These are models for either Intel or AMD sockets. So this means that while buying a Freezer 35, you have to decide beforehand if you are going to install it on top of an AMD or an Intel CPU. Now, I am so much conflicted about this topic. On one hand, I'm kind of pissed because I'm repurposing these coolers again and again and I'm using them on different platforms. And this basically halves my possible use cases. And that's freaking annoying for me. For the majority of people out there, however, it, it kind of makes sense. If we look at it in all honesty, how many out there are going to buy a budget-friendly aftermarket cooler? How many of those are keeping it until the CPU needs to be replaced? And how many of those are keeping the exact same budget aftermarket cooler to be used on another CPU of a completely different brand? In my opinion, these are a whack ton of ifs and I do kind of believe that in the end, there aren't many people who fulfill all of them at the same time. And I do realize that this kind of sounds like what Apple did back then when they ditched the wall adapter, but also back then I thought that this made kind of sense. Plus it's just hilarious that every Freezer 35 costs exactly one euro more if it has an I in the name, like if that isn't straight out of Apple's playbook. Except for the ARGB model, like ARGB on an I model costs two euros more because that makes any sense. So yeah, although it annoys me as a guy who mix matches hardware 24-7, I get Arctic's idea that it's kind of dumb that literally everybody who has ever bought an Arctic freezer has half of the installation material just laying around. So yeah. But okay, now let's finally cover the cooler. As our benchmarks are made on top of A3900X, we went with the A35 non-RGB model. Due to this decision, it heavily limits the amount of sockets which the cooler can be used to, to exactly one, an AM4. However, if we pretend like I would have had every model, the i35 can be installed on top of an LGA1150, LGA1200 and 1700. For the RAM clearance, as the Freezer 35 family is built to never overlap the first RAM slot, you can go with RAM as high as you would like. To transport the heat, Arctic went with their usual four direct touch copper heat pipes which are transporting the heat into the 158mm high fin stack. And no, you cannot make that thing shorter by removing the plastic on top of the cooler. Comparably to their Freezer 50, the new 35 is also coming with a ton of plastic, which is meant to keep the fan attached to the cooler. Speaking of which, the fan used on here is essentially just a regular P12 PVM spinning at 1800 RPM. There is no more information about this fan except for that. If we would just assume that I am right, it's pushing around 56 CFM at 2.2 mm of H2O. Now let's go over the installation method. On an AM4 socket, first remove the black retention brackets, position the spacers on top and screw it in using the new retention brackets in an outwards pointing position and the thread in the center sticking out in the top. From there, add some of that included Arctic MX5 thermal paste, remove the fan from the heatsink, flinch because of the screeching noise that aluminum makes when you rub it against plastic, go to the doctor to get a hearing aid, come back to position the heatsink on top, screw it down and screech the fan back in place while being kind of brutal because of the screeching noise it made before. On a small side note, usually longer fan cables are a good thing, but on here the cable is just 200 millimeters long and although that sounds like not enough, it is the absolute perfect length to reach the header without a meter of leftover cable afterwards. Okay, with that out of the way, let's finally get to the benchmarks because it's it's going to get a bit weird. While using our usual benchmark, we let the allegedly P12 spin at 100% of its speed. 
At full blast, the A35 managed to keep the 3900X at 54 degrees C. That's exactly the same spot as at Dark Rogue 4 and just a single degree behind the older Freezer 35 eSports. And this really makes sense. Sure, if we look at the heatsink, the new Freezer 35 seems like it's had a couple of weightlifting days in the past. The Freezer 35, however, comes with one of Arctic's Bionics P120 fans. And those are essentially just P12s on steroids. But those steroids do come at the cost of noise, and that's a point where the Freezer 35 can really shine. While it's true that the Freezer 35 can't reach temperatures as low as a Freezer 34 or the, the Freezer 50 counterpart, it absolutely annihilates the Freezer 34 in noise to performance, and even managed to match a Freezer 50 once the target temperature is set to be a bit higher. So although this is not a performance beast like the Freezer 34 Duo, it is a perfect cooler for anything like a Ryzen 5800X or 12700K or below. Cause in, in the end it was even hard to measure the Freezer 35's noise at all as it is beginning almost at a noise floor. Something that is usually reserved for enormous coolers such a like a Dark Rock Pro 4. So where does this leave us? Well, I'm happy and annoyed at the same time. I think it's a good approach they thickened the radiator. Compared to a Freezer 34, it was clearly time for that. However, I don't understand why 4 heat pipes are the maximum. Especially as there is now way more fin stack to use it. This also means that the base is still as small as it was before, which may even be a huge missed opportunity and should be tested out. But those are just possible upgrades. My main issue with this cooler is again the plastic that keeps the fan in place. I still do not like it. It doesn't feel good to remove or install it and it generally doesn't provide me with the confident feeling that a Freezer 34 for example did. It just reminds me of this. That being said, it is not as bad as uh, as it was on the Freezer 50. It's just the outer shell on one side and I mean yeah if the fan breaks you need to replace the whole damn thing and that's annoying but the cooler has many positive aspects which can outweigh that issue in my opinion. The performance is surprisingly good for the size, the noise to performance uh, is on the level of the Dark Rock Pro 4, just a bit smaller and a bit less, and the installation method is again Arctic style okay. But most importantly, price. That thing is going for roughly the same price as a Freezer 34 eSports, which is still an amazing price, and I and I can see this being the perfect fit for something like a Ryzen 5600X, it, G or, or whatever. It would be perfect for these kinds of things. As long as it can handle the heat, it will be such a quiet cooler. It's completely ridiculous. The only thing that I did not enjoy is the damn plastic. It would just have been so much better if the fan was attached like with a regular fan clip like the Freezer 34. Plus, I believe it would not have hurt if there was place for another fan in the back. Like, if we are talking potential Freezer A35 Duo, just saying. So, to buy or not to buy? Well, if you are on a budget and you're looking for an extremely quiet cooler, this is a perfect fit. If, on the other hand, you want a bit more cooling power and be even quieter on the lower end, the next stop would be the Freezer 34 Duo. But okay, this should be it for Arctic's A35 and I35 air coolers. At this point, a huge thank you to Arctic for sending them over. But if you want to keep watching, have a look at our take on the Freezer 34 Duo eSports. It is one of my personal favorites out there, honestly. And on a side note, we now have a Discord server, so just use the link in the description below and join us. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you on the next one. Bye bye.